Hi everyone, I'm Jules, and today I'm going to give you an easy way to create and manage progress of your project using Earned Value Management, otherwise known as EVM. Let us start by looking at the Project Management Institute's definition of EVM, which states that it is a management methodology for integrating scope, schedule, and resources and for objectively measuring project performance and progress. Now, what is it that EVM does exactly? Well, EVM is a way to manage project risk by measuring project progress. It is also a comparison between actual cost and budgeted costs to determine the variance and predicted future performance. And lastly, each project task earns value as the planned work is being completed. Now, through EVM, here are the questions that you should be able to answer. What is the remaining cost for the project? What is the entire project likely to cost? Are you currently under or over budget? How much will you be under or over budget at the end? Are you ahead or behind schedule on your project? How efficient are you using the time on the project? When is the project going to be completed? How efficient are the resources being used to plan? How efficient must you use the remaining resources on the project? Let's dive right in. In order to conduct EVM, you require a nomenclature called WBS or Work Breakdown Structure. The WBS is what links the budget and schedule. As an FYI, if you want to understand how to put together a WBS, please go to our video linked in the description below. We start with an example of a workplace package and its budget. This budget is placed at the beginning of the project during the planning phase so it's considered the baseline or original budget. The total budget amount of the work package is the planned value, otherwise known as PV. Now, anyone who has executed on a project will know that what you start with as a budget and schedule rarely are the same at the end of the project. There are changes which occur during the execution of a project, so we need to take into account that there is a probability that this will occur to the budget. Therefore, you can see I added two more columns, one for any changes to the budget and the current budget. Chances are you already have your schedule in a Gantt chart in MS Project, Primavera, or another software. If that's the case, you are going to have an easier time of getting the EVM calculations since these softwares do it for you. If you haven't invested in a project scheduling software and are using Excel, then it is also possible to create your EVM. It will just need more manual work. Now, to make it easier, I have placed EVM calculations of this example in Excel as a demonstration. You can see that the first five columns come from the budget planning. To tie the schedule to the budget, place the timeline in the title bar. In this example, I'm using months as my timeline, but you can have weeks or days as well. When a certain task is worked on, then you know you spent money performing the work. This is resource cost, which can be materials, people, or equipment. For instance, the first task to be worked on in March will be the time of a person to acquire raw materials so I'm estimating $10 worth of my current budget will be spent. The materials should then arrive in April, so the cost of the materials is $40. Using this logic, place how the current budget will be spent each month. Basically, you are placing the total amount you are estimating will be spent in a given month based on the work to perform. As you do this, you will find the planned value total being spread out and the cumulative budget amounts become the budget at complete for each of the months, otherwise known as BAC. You can see the curve showing you how you plan to spend the money during the execution phase of your project. On that point, 
During the execution phase, things happen and you may see iterations or changes to the project's budget. For instance, you may be approving additional costs or additional tasks are added to your work package. In this example, I have placed two changes to show you how change is incorporated in your budget and schedule. As you can see, in February, a new task 6 was added by the customer, and in March, a change order to task 3 occurred, adding more funds to the task. Now, the BAC goes from $345 to $370. When you are executing your project, work is being performed and the actual costs start coming in, otherwise known as the ACs. Keep in mind, the reason you changed the BAC is because you got approvals for the extra funds. In execution, you can also end up spending more money on a task. If the customer is not willing to pay for it, you end up with cost overrun or more costs absorbed, making the project less profitable. Now, these costs can be approved costs for materials and services, such as paying invoices, or they can be approved hours from the resources doing the work on the task. If we plot the AC on the graph against the PV, we can visually see if we are over or under budget. At the moment, the project in this example is under budget, which is a good sign. If you simply record the costs, the progress shown is like the prior page. Your project is under budget. This is where EVM comes in. You need to see how much of the task was really performed for the same given month, not just the costs it incurred. So, keeping to the same example, use the percent complete from your schedule to calculate EV, which is multiplying the PV with the percent complete. Now, when we plot the EV curve on the graph, you can see that the project has completed more work than planned and the work performed should have cost more than the AC to date. This is a great place to be in for a project. Now, if, on the other hand, the work performed was below the AC curve, then it would tell you that you need to still do more work and chances are you will be going over budget. Remember when I was talking about scheduling softwares? This is where they become handier than using Excel. In Excel, you will need to calculate the deltas to see where your project is going, while with the scheduling software, it calculates it for you. Here are the calculations for the cost variance and scheduling variance. Further calculations to answer the questions I went through with you at the beginning of this video, showing you the efficiency. The table with the performance measures is something a project manager should know when using EVM. Of course, if you are just starting to use EVM, you should have the table handy so you can interpret the results based on the calculations and forecast exactly where your project is at. Estimate to complete and estimate at complete are common acronyms in EVM. This is where you predict your project's future based on the information you know so far during execution. The ETC is forecasting the remaining costs you believe are required to complete the project. The EAC is adding up all the costs left with the AC to tell you how much your entire project will cost. The forecasting piece is where the remaining EV curve can be plotted in order to give you a visual look at where your project will land. In this example, at the end of your project, you will be under budget by $15 and on time, completing in December. What you now have in front of you are additional calculations for forecasting and will answer the questions, how much will the project be under or over budget? When is the project going to be completed? And lastly, how efficient must you use the remaining resources on the project?
Just like the performance measure table I showed you a couple of slides ago, this EVM graph is something you want to have handy while you are learning how to interpret EVM. This shows all of the information we calculated prior in the example. Finally, here were the questions we had gone through at the beginning of this video. Each one can now be answered using EVM, and here is how you answer them. What is the remaining cost for the project? You'll use the estimate to complete. What is the entire project likely to cost? To answer this, you'll use estimate at completion. Are you currently under or over budget? This could be answered using the cost variance. How much will you be under or over budget at the end? Answer this using various at completion. Are you ahead or behind schedule on your project? This is answered with schedule variance. How efficient are you using the time on the project? Use schedule performance index. When is the project going to be completed? You should use time estimate at completion. How efficient are the resources being used to plan? Here, you'll use cost performance index. And lastly, how efficient must you use the remaining resources on the project? And to answer this, you will use the to complete performance index. We hope you found this learning valuable to you. For more learnings, go to our website and subscribe. Thank you.